Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're going to frag some corals. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Teats. Today we are at Purple Seahorse fragging up some coral and I brought the bandsaw so we can frag stuff a little easier. Now certain ones like this you don't really need a bandsaw for. I mean just snippers or break it off but since we have it we're going to use it. If you cut it flat, it gives you, it's healthier for the coral and it gives you a nice flat base to glue it, which is one of the big benefits. Uh, another quick thing with the frag plugs is put them in water first because the air bubbles will stop the glue from drying to it. So letting it soak in water for a little bit first will make it glue way easier. All right, so we're gonna cut this up and make some nice little frags. This thing's magic for fragging. It cuts through stuff like butter. This wouldn't really matter, but like torches and stuff, if you frag them, you, you can splinter the skeleton and sometimes you'll like split the head. This just gives you that nice, perfect clean cut. Ooh, look at all those frags. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, it took 10 seconds. Oh, yeah. yeah. This thing, like, you especially stuff like. <laughs> <laughs> like eight cans and those corals that are really encrusted, like that's where this thing really comes in. All right, do you want to glue and frag plugs right now? Oh, I'm going to help you with this one here. That a boy. I'm your assistant. Excellent. Like See, tea. that's the other big thing. Like, look how nice that is to glue to a plug oh, now. That's what oh, you're shooting nice. for. Then it'll actually stay on the plug versus... Oh, stand up nicely. Yeah. This is professionalism. And this well, is what we came for. We yeah. For yeah, they're okay for a little while. Does the glue dry pretty quickly? Um, it depends on the glue. You can you can use super glue accelerator. Make sure it dries really fast. Um, that's like the super quick way. If you dip it, trick. I don't know if anybody's tried this. Dip before, in water. You can also use uh, baking soda. Oh, I haven't really? tried that. Baking soda and cyanocrylate will be within five seconds. You'll have a hard baking shell soda. Out. Yep. We're well, we gonna have to try that. In case you raise your pH. That's all right. Win. <laughs> Bonus. Okay, so now I'm gonna set this in the bucket. Just lean it up. I cracked in half. Mm. Uh, the Pistillopora. Yeah, that one. That's because I didn't think I could take it out of the water at all. I would have yeah, taken it out of the water. Enough. I would have taken it out of the water, glued it on properly, like yep. held on to it. I had it in this, like, you know, it just wasn't. Yeah, you live and you learn, dude. That's we're all here to learn. Yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like, I most just, really I just, I genuinely feel bad. Yeah. I, was, I felt so bad <laughs> about <good>. hurting it. <laughs> you know that, what that's I mean? good, like, though. You know? The coral appreciates that. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? But yeah, I actually genuinely do not want to lose any fish or coral. No one who no one does, nope. but I care no. about them like they're my pets, you know. Oh, yeah. totally are. Well, they are. Yeah, yeah. They are your pets. Yeah. Yeah. But the coral is like that too, you know. I mean, if you take a torch coral to the water, normally you bring it upside down. Like if you wave it around, tease the heads a bit, so they suck in. Because if all the polyps and the heads are out, it's a lot more stress on it. Yeah. Or if they're in like that, it's not as big of a deal. Oh, cool. That's good to know. Yeah. Well, now, if you move too fast, it can rip off, right? It, it could potentially. I mean, usually it's okay, yeah. but usually I'll just tease it to suck it in yeah and like so if you look at that one it's kind of like two heads almost yeah but it's not split yet so it's kind of mid split yeah, yeah. so usually those and like it gets so long still okay. yeah like so right like in here you could technically frag that but yeah. i think we're just going to cut this and do big frags yeah, yeah. but generally i personally like to wait until they're fully split just yeah. to make it a bit safer yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go, go. Oh, great so super buddy. duper clean <laughs> Now, very nicely done. People do cut these with like, just like bone cutters. Yeah. Oh. But the problem with that is like I've had times where it's split the skeleton and I've had like a head split in half and I've had like yeah. super glued together and stuff. Where did we... you hear it scream? Yes, I did. It <laughs> but yeah, shit. so that that's one thing, right? Where yeah. this way you get that nice perfect cut. And there's it, there's less stress on the coral. Yeah, like yeah. that's one of the big advantages yeah. of doing it this way. So, so, so say like I take this thing home or whatever, right? Yep. Do I uh, put it in the tank on the distal or do I still take it off the disc and then put um, it That's up to you. I mean, yeah. usually frag plugs. What's the best way? I would normally take stuff off because I don't like to look at frag plugs in yeah, my tank. Yeah, they look nice. Yeah. yeah, cause it just, then you see a bunch of white circles everywhere, right? Yeah. So I personally break stuff off. Frank plugs are more for like displaying and selling it. It, okay. it keeps stuff in place on the rack instead of falling over and hitting each other, right? Makes sense, yeah, yeah. So that's the okay, big cool. advantage there. Yeah, so this is a Duncan it's coral. It's branching, so again, same thing, just no. basically oh, frag it in the, like the tree branches yeah. areas. Yeah. On this guy, just where it is, like all the tree trunk areas, yeah. like yeah. those are the super easy places to frag it. Yeah. Um, so I think the average person would just hold it and snap it. Well, this is actually is thin there, but normally yeah. like it's too thick to snap it. Like yeah. like bone cutters, you could. Yeah, I don't think I'd ever actually do it myself. Yeah, uh, you can. I've seen some people use like a Dremel with a little diamond blade, which can work too. Okay. It's not quite as clean, but it'll do the job and it's cheaper, right? So. Or you can go above and beyond and have one of these. Yeah, pretty much. So like that's a nice easy break right there. So I'm gonna cut that one here. Great. 
some people get stuff like that. It helps the hobby move forward. Exactly. Yeah, there's those and then yeah, there's those, one. right? You know, there's the zoas <laughs> that are worth 20 bucks. But I can't tell the difference. And there's shit zoas <laughs> that will take over your tank and look like crap. Yeah. I was thinking about some of those too, but if I was bare bottom, maybe. Yeah, that's a Monty. That looks like a. Probably yeah. a Superman so Monty. So this guy, I'm just going to cut off the dead and then split in half and make it into two frags. Devin, I had a question. Um, yep. So these small things, when you were fragging it, mm -hmm. realistically, if you were to throw it in a tank, would it... They would grow. It yep. would eventually? Oh yeah, like they'll... They, oh, yeah. they can grow from anything. Okay. Frags? <laughs> Yeah, they definitely will. Like sometimes when I'm fragging stuff, like if there's all these little tiny ones that broke off, like I'll just glue a bunch on a plug. Oh, yeah. And then like three, four months from now, you might have like a nice little frag, right? So resilient. Now the stuff we're fragging doesn't really matter too much, but if you're fragging something like A cans, the slime coat can be aggressive to other corals. So you'd want to like rinse out and change the water and the saw afterwards. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you're like fragging like an A can, like Antonat or something, go to frag something else that could hurt the new frag healing because of those toxins that oh, were okay. leached off for that. <laughs> but none of the stuff we fragged so far has really had a big slime coat on it. But I didn't know that, that's crazy. Yeah. Good to think of. Yeah, you're so if you're doing like, something. yeah, if you're doing a bunch of different types of coral that are more the encrusting type that get that slimy coat, you want to like change the water between different species. <laughs> Good call. Good yep. call. That's just that one. <laughs> oh, that's real nice. Look at that cut. That is just like, awesome. It's like butter. Awesome. It's like butter. So we're not doing it right now, but I know you had the Brightwell stuff out here. So the restore, this is a good one too for like A cans and fleshy ones and stuff. It's going to help it recover. It has amino acids and stuff that will help it recover quicker. Perfect. So it's a good frag dip for after. Now we're fragging up some Zoas. Um, important thing with Zoas is do not use like a rusty blade on it. So I generally will use a new scalpel blade when I do it. So I use a scalpel for it. Um, if you use a rusty blade, that can kill them just from the rust of the other stuff on it. So usually I just use a brand new blade every time. So you should probably have gloves and glasses on, frag and zoas. On these, want to go through the heads. These I can almost probably just rip apart with my hands to be honest, but generally we'll go through kind of through the middle. Now these are really big, so. Thanks. You're welcome. But generally, if you go straight through the middle, try and go between the heads and you're just cutting the base, the flesh on the bottom. So, wow. ideally, how we got a chunk of the plug or the rock off. That's good, yeah. Now, that's by good. doing that, you're not stretching them all out, right? Because you're not cutting the flesh at the base of them. So that, that's always a big one to get kind of nice Zoa frags. Yeah, so big, big thing with Zoa is <coughs> always use a brand new blade because an old blade can potentially kill if there's any rust on it and your Zoa dies, then it's just a waste, right? Um, and two, if when you're cutting it, ideally if you can get underneath like the coral or whatever it's on and shave it below it, yeah. they're not actually cutting the coral makes a big difference. But basically as much as you can do to get less stress or trauma towards it. That is the coolest looking one, man. Okay, so how oh, many, oh, sorry. is this getting completely fragged or just like a few heads Send off? Send it. Send it, it's yeah, happening. Let's frag it up for the... Okay, all right, so we got a nice lovely torch coral that everyone around us wants. <laughs> So again, like just gonna bug the heads right now, like just shake them around a bit, trying to get them to retract, just so it's less stress on them once they're pulled in, which definitely helps. So, so they'll go as small as the other one did. Sorry. Um, sometimes they don't always do it, but usually once you bug them a bit, they will come in. And when you feed them too, they do that. Yeah. Right. So like, like ideally they'd be better if they're in more, but they'll still be okay. So. Now on this, big thing, make sure the heads are all away. So I'm just going to frag this in half just to make it easier first. Okay, that's all the last one, yeah. All right, there you go. <laughs> Great job, dude. That was awesome. So cool, man. Oh, Those so super handy. The coral surgeon's sticking, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> you never know. Buddy, I got a cricket. This right? is happening. Yeah? <laughs> I know what I'm getting you for your birthday. Do you like the crickets? <laughs> yeah, those things are sweet. Well, uh, best for, uh, to be right in front of like the pumps, flow-wise? Like, what do you guys think? Kind of like in the middle, right? Middle, you you right? don't want to be blasted because they have really, torches have really sharp skeletons. Yeah. And if it's too much flow, it can actually like cut through the tissue over time. Okay. 
So it's kind of like in the middle, right? You, yeah. you want to have it lots of movement, but not like blast. I have my hammer kind of in the middle, like yeah. in front of it. You know, mm -hmm. it goes over here, my hammer's in the middle. And it's stayed pretty tight, but when I turned it off, mm -hmm. it's actually blossomed out pretty nice. Yeah. So, so maybe I shouldn't be right in the middle, maybe just a little bit above. Yeah. I found a lot of happiness in the sand bed. Really? I would do the sand bed. Well, sand bed also has a lot of flow too, right? Because yeah. like a lot of pumps, you get the undertow on the sand bed. Oh, yeah. that's So there's still okay. flow there, like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, maybe I'll try the sand bed. Oh no, it's the goes. undertow. What do you say? <laughs> Let's go! Woohoo! <laughs> 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 Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm super often brave enough to try it, but at least I know yeah. what kind of glue to have. Yes. And the trick with the water, yeah. yep. you know, I wouldn't know that. Super, super glue gel is ideally, like you want something thick. The liquid stuff, you just get your hands all glued and it's a bit of a mess. And then usually once you put the glue on it, I'll dip it in for a second and lift it back out. And the, the water will start activating the glue. So weird. And then give it a sec. And then once you put it... to get specific like coral or like reef safe? Um, just from a hardware store. This is, this is coral. That is like a hobby store glue. Okay. So from like Home Depot type of deal, yeah. the Gorilla Glue gel works yeah. fairly well. Yeah. My only complaint is when you put it in, there seems to be a bit of a layer that goes to the top of the water. Oh yeah. So that's a bit annoying where some of the more coral specific ones are less likely to do that. So when they're out of the water, they're still at the end of the world. Right? Um, they're fine for a little while. No, they're, they're okay. As long as they don't get too dry, right? Like for a minute or two is fine. Like in some place in the ocean, there'll be like low tide, right? And they'll be out for a while. So. Well, everybody, I'm Kai. And I'm Devin. And we love fish. Yeah, we do. So, hope you guys enjoyed today's video, a little demo on fragging. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. And we'll catch you guys on the next update. Have a good one. Thanks for dropping by.